Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm going to talk about, you know, what do I think of Furlan Mari and Kurono Tokyo, two uh, micro brands that have taken the world by storm. Am I ever embarrassed to tell people I'm wearing an expensive watch and the collectability of older Panerai? These are questions you asked on my Instagram account, and I'm going to answer them today and more. Now, of course, before we get started, a couple of things. Firstly, I'm wearing my H. Moser Pioneer green dial. I put it on an orange Moser rubber strap. It's getting hot here in Miami, so, um, I don't know, rubber is very appropriate. And also, I'm kind of aware these videos have slowed down a little bit. We're going through some slight internal changes here at Delray Watch. Uh, a new person on board, been doing lots of training. Uh, hopefully, by next week, we should be good to go, so I want to apologize uh, if I haven't been as present as I should be. And also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. We just got in a Rolex Batgirl complete set, and it is the cheapest one available in the country in this condition and in this set. That is something we like to do here at Delray Watch. Rolexes might be expensive, but we try and always be the most competitive we can. We got in a JLC Reverso Tribute Moon my favorite current generation Reverso, full box and papers, and a very good and excellent condition, very rare vintage IWC Ingenieur. This one used to be my partner, my business partner John's watch, and he's letting it go from uh, his collection. All available on DelrayWatch.com. Link in the description below. So, guys, these are questions you asked me on my Instagram account. You'll see. Uh, the Q&A picture pop up on at Federico Talks Watches. That happens a couple times a month. When you do, you're allowed to ask questions. Please don't DM me as I don't check them. So today, in no particular order, we start with Targa Florio. And he says, great channel. Thank you. Been watching since the beginning. Thank you again. Love your no BS style. I love the compliment. What is your opinion on the PAM 210 and whether early 2000s Panerais will depreciate, retain value, or appreciate? Well, Targa, uh, I don't think they're going to depreciate much. Panerai's depreciated a bunch, but the early 2000s Panerai's are the ones that have held the best. They're considered the most collectible. They're from the hype era of Panerai. I think they'll retain pretty well. Whether they'll appreciate is hard to say. They're not exactly rare, but I don't think they'll depreciate any further. So I'm a strong believer in them retaining a decent amount of value. B Weaves, 17. Are you ever embarrassed to tell people the price of your watch to a non-watch person? How do you approach the answer? I'm not particularly embarrassed. People know that I'm a watch collector. People know that I'm a watch dealer. Um, but if a non-watch person asks me how much my watch is, my answer depends. Are they a close friend? If they are, well, then I tell them how much it is. If it isn't, I generally respond something vague. Uh, oh, this? Yeah, this was a beauty. It took me a while to save up. Or... Yeah, you know, watches aren't cheap, but, you know, I'd rather eat bologna sandwiches for a couple weeks and save up. Something like that. Something nondescript. Yeah, you know, not cheap, but I really love it. However, if they keep prodding, you know, how much is the price? Well, you can either tell them or sometimes, uh, you know, there's a nice way to say none of your business. Uh, I, I don't know, something along the lines of... Yeah, no, it certainly wasn't cheap, but, uh, this, you know, don't really remember what it was. Something like that. There's always a way to avoid the subject. I mean, I think asking price is generally rude, unless, of course, you're talking with another watch collector. T-Man making moves. What's up, Fed? I'm thinking about purchasing a moon phase. Any solid recommendations in the 2500 to 5000 range? Yes, my personal favorite, and actually, you know, full disclosure, one we have for sale, is the Zenith Captain Moonface. Well under $5,000, very thin watch, fully in-house from a brand like Zenith, which has a lot of history, and I think it's a very well-proportioned dial. I think the Zenith Captain Moonface is one you should absolutely look at, and you get an in-house option in generally a price range where most things are at a base. Hanlon84. Afternoon Fed, when will we see you in the UK next? Also, how many people are buying watches on finance? Are people going to debt just to flex? Cheers. The UK, I'm not really sure. I haven't been over in a little while. Hopefully at some point this year. In terms of how many people are buying watches on finance, you know, owning a watch store, 
I can have a little bit of access to this information. I mean, how many people are buying watches on credit cards? The vast majority. Now, whether they're financing it and paying interest on their credit card or just paying off the balance in full because credit card is convenient and you earn points, well, that's impossible to tell. But I do know the vast majority use credit cards. However, we do offer financing uh, at Delray Watch through PayPal credit. And I wouldn't say it's massively common. I I'd say from between 80 and 100 sales a month, we get three or four applications for financing. So it's definitely not a huge amount. However, I do think the vast majority of people financing their watches are doing it through their credit, through their credit and just paying their high interest, uh, as opposed to applying for financing with Delray Watch, where it's generally interest-free. That's kind of stupid, in my opinion, but I do believe a lot of people are financing their watches, just not the proper way. Mag Howry 9 Hey, Fed, great work. Thank you. What's your opinion on watches like Furlan Mari and Corona Tokyo? Well, Furlan Mari I've never really had in my hand. I love their neo-vintage styling. The dials are beautiful. It's just a Seiko Mecha Quartz movement for the most part. Nothing wrong with it. I think they're a little overpriced for what they are. They certainly don't deserve the hype, in my opinion, but I do find them beautiful. Corona Tokyo, on the other hand, I also find beautiful, and it's... um the lower end brand of of a famous Japanese watchmaker, an independent Japanese watchmaker. However, these people buy and uh, try and sell for two, three times the price. Now I can tell you every time Corona releases a watch, I get like 50 emails the next morning, people trying to flip them. And in the beginning, people could do that. They could make money. But Corona started releasing so many new models that they're not really necessarily rare anymore. I mean, they've made thousands of watches at this point. So they're worth... Not even the retail price, in my opinion. I mean, these are Miyota movements uh, or Seiko Seiko movements in a nice packaging that are pretty expensive because they're associated with a famous Japanese watchmaker. And people used to flip them because in the beginning they were genuinely rare, but now they're as common as a pair of dirty underwear. And every time they release a watch, I got to wake up to 50 emails and reply 50 times, thank you, but not a chance I don't want it. It is what it is. The, I, do I like them? Yeah, they're nice watches. Are they worth the price? No, not really. They're pretty low quality. Adam is in the sea, says, What do you think of tuning fork movements and their future, and their future collectability? As vintage markets continues to heat up, will their interest increase? Tuning forks are cool, like the Bulova Space View. Will their interest increase? Uh, maybe a little bit, but the problem with tuning forks is nobody knows how to fix them, and there's no spare parts. Delray Watch doesn't service tuning forks. Hans wouldn't touch a tuning fork, you know, with a 10-foot pole. I'm not saying they're bad movements, but once they break or need service, and they will need service, especially because they're vintage, good luck trying to find a watchmaker to fix them. I'm sure one or two of them exist. It's not impossible, but the danger of a tuning fork, and most watch collectors who are intelligent know, is there a pain in the behind to get working properly. God forbid they need any work. And I think that is going to hinder their future collectability. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching another episode. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And we'll be back on a regular schedule very soon. I promise. Thank you and take care.